Okay, so let's see if I can explain ANOVA based on what we already remember about the t-test. Remember when we were doing a sample t, we had a distribution, and then we looked to see where our sample fell in this known distribution. And so we used the equation that we had the sample mean minus the mu divided by the standard error of the mean. In this case, it ended up being this, this whole package here. So the way the pattern for the t-test was, is we took the sample mean, subtract what we thought it might be, divided by the standard deviation, or whatever this is. So I just want you to take stock of what that was. So I have the sample of maybe 25 people, and I have their mean, and then I say, how does that mean differ from what I thought it would be, divided by the standard deviation of the distribution of whatever it is I pulled from? Then I want you to remember that we had, um, we went on and did a two sample uh, t-test and the, the one I'm going to talk about now is the independent sample t. So then we had two distributions, right? And so we wanted to see how the two distributions compared to each other. So then we ended up with a formula where we had two sample means and then we subtracted out what we thought they would be, but we hypothesized that to be zero. And then we divided by the pooled standard deviation. Now, remember this denominator got complicated because we had two sets of distributions, so we had two sample sizes, we had two guesstimates for what the standard deviation would be, but essentially it's the same process. It's um, This one was what did I get minus what I thought I'd get divided by the standard deviation of whatever it is I'm measuring here. This is what did I get minus what I thought I'd get divided by the standard deviation of whatever it is I measured here. So essentially what we did was we looked at the differences between these two means and had to take into account the standard deviation between them. What we're doing with an ANOVA is adding a third distribution. And so when we have a third distribution, we're still somewhat doing the same pattern of what did I get minus what I thought I'd get divided by the standard deviation of whatever it is I'm measuring. But it got a little bit more complicated because I now have three different, different, <laughs> different distributions. So if I were to quantify the amount of variability that happens in these three different di distributions, I don't know why I'm having trouble with that word. <laughs> um, there's two ways in which really I can describe the variability. So for example, you might imagine somebody who falls here. Well, they're different from everybody else because they differ from the mean of the distribution that they're in, but they're also different from everyone else in that this distribution has an error rate and then it's different from all the others. So to help us understand the two ways in which the variability can differ, I am going to redraw, attempt to redraw these three different distributions. So pretend that's just a copy paste. So in this um, part up here, I'm going to talk about how we have three different means. And so if we have three different means, we really have to talk about how each of these means differ from each other, right? And so that's how there is variability between the distributions. And so we have to say, well, I know that there's variability within this one, but we can see that this one has a mean that's way down here, this distribution has a mean that's up here, and this distribution has a mean that's up here. So there's variability between each of these distributions. But after we've accounted for that, we also have to talk about how each distribution has its own within variability. So despite the fact that these distributions are up the scale increasingly, they have a different width, and we have to account for that width, um, and we call that within variability. So this could have been a very skinny distribution and had the mean in the same spot, or it could have had the mean in the same spot and have a very fat distribution. So when I'm thinking about these, the variability in these sets of data, I have to think about the fact that they're different in that they're separated um, across the scale their means are separated, but the also, once you've planted the means, the variability from each distribution has its own width. So what we're going to do is calculate the between and the within. And I drew them this way because the actual math is taking the between and the within, and that ends up giving you the F score that we use to test the statistic. So the T distribution, we looked at how um, the T-score fell in the rejection region, and then for the ANOVA, we looked at how, we're gonna look at how the F-score falls in the rejection region. So I kind of just 
um, generically wrote between and within, but now let me explain to you how we get that. So remember when we learned about z-scores, and um, actually, no, when we learned about variability, how we had a set of scores and um, we wanted to find the average um, deviation, but we couldn't just um, take the deviations, sum them up, and divide by how many there were because they would always sum up to be zero by definition of the mean. So we all decided we had to square them. So if that, you can remember that lecture, we had to square the deviations so they wouldn't sum up to be zero. And then we could uh, attempt to assess an average deviation from that. So if you go back to the idea of variance, we had to use the squared values. We're going to do that again now. So when I'm looking at the variability between these different distributions, I have to look at the, um, I have to kind of average out the variability. Like I, that's kind of the constant mantra of what we're doing is averaging out and, and accounting for variability. And so what I'm going to do is take the deviations from the different distributions and then um, square them so they don't sum to be zero and then sum them up and take an average. So what we're going to do is get our sum of squares. So this is just the sum of squared deviations. So hopefully you remember why we sum them because we have to sum them up before we take an average. And then we squared them because otherwise they will sum up to be zero. So take the sum of squared deviations and then I have to divide by the number of um, deviation or the number of uh, dist distributions that I'm looking at. But remember, we had a lecture about talking about um, degrees of freedom. So we're actually going to go back to degrees of freedom here. So it's going to be the degrees of freedom between. And the degrees of freedom between is just how many different distributions do you have minus one. It's always that kind of minus one factor for degrees of freedom. So just to remind you that the degrees of freedom between is going to be the number of groups you have minus one. So I'm going to say R is the number of groups. So in this case, I have three groups. So then my degrees of freedom between would be two. So this sums the squares between is going to end up being the mean squared between. See how it's a mean? I've summed up all the squares and divided by how many groups I have. So that's a mean squared between. So then I can do the same for this lower part here. I'm going to sum up all the deviations, but I have to square them so they don't sum up to be zero. And then I'm going to sum them up and find an average. So I take the sums of squares within and I'm going to divide by the degrees of freedom within. And so just like I did up here, I'm now going to get a mean squared within. So what I've done is for this picture, I've described the average deviation up here divided by the average deviation down here. And if I take those two numbers, that is how I calculate my F-score. So what I will let you do is you can go back to the book and look at how you would actually go about calculating the sums of squares between and the sums of squares within. But essentially what they've just done, what we've just done, is um, conceptually taken the between data and summed up that idea so that we could get a sense for how each of these distributions differ from a grand mean. Then we take the average of that and put it here. Then we have to think about how each of these different distributions is contributing to just an overall error rate. So you think about if I were to collapse across all of these, our overall error rate, error rate looks like this. So I want to have a concept of um, this within variability, not just between the groups, but how does this within variability contribute to the overall error rate? So once I've averaged those or summed them up, divide by the degrees of freedom, then I can get the mean squared within. Sorry, I forgot to mention that the degrees of freedom for within, it's going to be our sample size because I'm thinking how this person is different from here and this person is different from here. So it's your sample size minus the number of groups you have because you're going to do it for each of these. So that's your degrees of freedom for your sums of squares, or yeah, sums of squares within. It's going to be your total sample size minus the number of groups you have. Okay, let me know if you have questions.